All right. This is Slim Bob. Another review. No, it's I'm wearing the same shirt as my last one. That's good. I'm. <coughs> Sorry, I just kind of coughed a bit then. It's because I'm filming this on the same day. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, yeah. All right. This is a weird one. I've not. I've done rants on anime before on Bleach, specifically Bleach. This is a review of an anime. And this anime is like, oh, alright, I'm going to talk about it. It's called Elf and Weed. It's called Elf and Weed, this anime. I've mentioned it in another review before. I think one of my rants, me. Alright, this, alright, just get it off with. This is amazing. Elf and Weed is fucking amazing. It's, I've never known how like it in my life. Wow. Just, wow. I watched it twice now. I like, the first time I watched it, I watched it online. And I thought, you know what, I watched the last episode and I thought, I'm a rake nomad because I watched it online for no, and I thought, you know what, I have to buy it. It's not fair. Because it's a masterpiece. Elf and Leeds are masterpiece. For several reasons. First one, I want to get this out of the way as well. If you remember, I reviewed a film called Cannibal Holocaust, and one of my big complaints about that film was that the filmmakers were wrong in how they tried to put across their message, because they killed real animals to show the horrors of human nature. This has a similar message to shock you, to show how horrible humanity can be, and it does it expertly. It's so good. I can't believe it's 15, actually. Alright, what's it about? It's, yeah, if you... Yeah, alright, I'll explain. What it is, right, it starts off... There's... You're in this facility. There's this woman. Like... And it turns out... There's this uh, species called the Diclonius. They're like humans, but they like have horns. And they have these things called vectors. Which come out, they're like invisible hands. Invisible arms and they rip people apart. And this Diclodius called Lucy escapes from this facility. And as she's escaping, she gets shot in the head, destroying that mask. And she loses her memory. She gets wound up in Kamakura, where there's this bloke called Kota. Bloody Kota with his big eyes. And he takes her in his home. Which is a huge restaurant, or it's a former restaurant. And basically, it's about the organisation trying to find Lucy. And she adopts this new personality, and it's called New. Because she can't talk, she can say, she can't actually say anything. So she just said, New, 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 all the time. And that's what it's about. It's about, it's about them trying to find Lucy. But through the through everything you'll learn how she went to the facility and about Kota's past, how his family was killed and oh, he's just <sighs> So yeah, the story sounds weird. It sounds like, yeah, who cares? But one of my main big things with Elf and Lead is the characterization because it's only thirteen episodes. But for some reason, I've never known. The characterization is a, is excellent because you learn so much about them. But the information you learn, it's so precise. You learn, you know everything about them. You you can see who they are. These characters within thirteen episodes, and that rarely happens. It really, it really is something like that. I mean, oh, 